I have seen Marcus's uh, deck and it's a red-blue uh, concoction with, uh, for, for Marcus, very unfamiliar, aggressive draws every now and then. He has uh, two, two drops in this one, arena athlete, two of them. That is, that is not very, very uh, uh, truck-like. No, it's very uncharacteristic for him. Start off with an island. Which is very characteristic for him. Very characteristic. I haven't really <laughs> seen uh, Bjorn's uh, deck uh, this time around. No. Um, he was done building when, when I made the rounds to the VIP tables. Yeah. Even at, at this level, I, I think Marcus feels a bit uncomfortable with playing a 2-3 already on turn 3. Yeah. Uh, Bjorn uh, plays the 3-2 that gains uh, 3 life if you uh, have uh, an enchantment to play. Uh, just to get something out there. Uh, maybe he wants to bestow on it. Uh, I think it's called Lagonaband Elder. And um, yeah. it should, should, should be obvious here if, if he intends to bestow on it um, from the block. If if, if he blocks, he then he he just needs uh, he just wants uh, wants to tr trade away the board and uh, come back with larger dudes or may maybe have time to find uh, the, his second color. And here's the, the athlete in action. Still Bjorn on, still, still on, black still Bjorn. on uh, planes. Yeah, we, we think the black is his second color, right? Yeah, we. Uh, I, I definitely saw the the three, three the flyer, flyer, the flyer that uh, can regenerate. Yeah. Gets in for two. Or no, he gets in for two. Marcus was counting on a divine verdict, divine verdict there. Uh, maybe a last breath. Yeah, maybe a last breath. There swamp. we go. And a here. slamming swamp. And a three-three vigilance. There we go. Flying, regenerate. End step. Is this a steam augury? No, it's uh, kill the. Uh, Regenerator before it has the opportunity to regenerate. Sphinx as well. Yeah. A 3 4 flyer that lets you scry every time you play an instant or sorcery. Bjorn is holding his cards just outside of you, keeping them to himself. And That is a draw and a half. Yes. Um, immediately building himself a, a three, three, five, three uh, five flyer there. Yeah, and drawing a card. And um, it's quite possible that he actually was waiting on on being able to, to trigger the the wing seed rider on the same turn that he uh, played it. Just playing around uh, the random burn spells. Yeah. That, that uh, Marcus may have. Magma yet uh, stuff like that. Yeah. Well, in that, that, in that, that case, uh, he shouldn't reasonably block here, should he? No, I, I think the it's uh, it's no good blocking. There are so many tricks that that Marcus can have to yeah. just finish off the 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 wingsuit rider. Yeah. So yeah, he'll just take it here. Yeah. And what does Marcus follow up with? Also keeping his card just out of sight of you. These guys are really not slouching in their seats. They're, they're <laughs> lean back. Yeah. Um, way too much for our, for, for our taste. That's better, truck. Come on, show us those cards. Show us those cards. It looks like a 3-2 flash untapped dude. Or am I mistaken? 
maybe. Oh, it's, it's, there's a master of waves in his hand as well. He wants to get some more juice out of uh, the blue devotion. Maybe land another blue creature. Also, I'm fairly certain that the, um, the other creature I saw was a 3 2 flash on tap. Or not? Or maybe. Even so, it might just be worth to take the free here. Yeah, and, and uh, just play get the it. Get the guy. Oh, now we're recognizing Truck. He's back to his old form. Big the soul there. Yeah. Happy with the card on top. Yeah. Just making sure. <laughs> One last peek. Yeah. Was this card that I wanted? Swing, take five, and down comes the nice. master of the waves. It's still an impressive eight power. Yeah, casually. One card. Eight, eight power for four mana. A fragile py power, though. Uh, Bjorn might have something to, to finish off the. Uh, Any back removal here yeah. would be good. Or a last breath. Oh, that's that gaining ordeal? 10 life straight up when he attacks here. That's the ordeal, yeah. Oh, yeah, ordeal of uh, Heliod. Helio. Going up to 18, but does he have something to deal with that master? The attack for 5 here, sure, it's fine, but the counter attack is, is for 13, so it would go down to 5. Yeah. He's just not winning this race. No. But he, he has to attack there. You just just to fire off the the, the ten life. If, yeah. if if he doesn't attack, he's in a, in an even worse position. Yeah. He doesn't seem to have drawn his six land at least. Uh, so stalling on uh, two land drops. Yeah. More here since he drew this one. Or is even free? <coughs> and this must be the third, because he, he's played the the first uh, five drop, and then the, the double play, and yeah. then the second five drop, and now this turn. Yeah. So this would be the, the third, third land drop you miss. Just have some play though. Oh, cool. okay. <coughs> I just gained ten life. I can pay uh, some. Uh, he might actually be looking to to lure in uh, Marcus to to do the do the alpha strike and and uh, try to kill him off whatever cards he can muster up. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he Marcus is at twelve and he has uh, five power on board, uh, so it's. It's not um, impossible to to gain another seven damage uh, and upkeep uh, Magami at your face. Scry one from the uh, bring him that much closer to to just sealing this game. Yeah, uh, he's he only has one red mana, so uh, and there we go. That's uh, that's game one. Yeah, Marcus is playing burn to the dome. Yeah. yeah, there we have the concession. So yeah. Bjorn taking his time to make sure that the, uh, the, 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 the math, math was correct, yeah. So it's uh, one up for Marcus here. Yeah. Um, it's kind of hard to decide. I, I didn't see any directly bad cards in the matchup for, for Bjorn here. Uh, he played a lot of enchantments, but yeah. Marcus didn't play any bounds, so... Uh, I haven't spotted any, any cards that uh, he, no. he wants uh, to, to he, sideboard out. He lost out. all on mana yeah. uh, and uh, didn't really have any early action either. Yeah. So uh, it's, uh, it's hard to, to tell anything from this. Yeah.
He seems to have found at least two cards that he wants to bring in. Standard for a day. Yeah. They keep all the cards off camera. Yeah. <laughs> so secretive. Yeah. Bjorn seems to be finished with the sideboarding at least. Now Pyle's ruffling. <coughs> Mark is still taking his time. Interested in taking out some of the the clunkier cards, but I felt that, that like his clunky cards are like the, th the three four flyers. It seems very good in the matchup. He, he needs something to, to hold off the, the three threes from from Bjorn's side. So I'm not quite sure what he what he's thinking about. Perhaps he'll. He'll show us? No, not very likely. <laughs> so I, I did some counting on uh, on the standing center. At most, there will be 27 players tomorrow. Oh, okay. And uh, uh, most likely less, since there are several matches where uh, a player that is already uh, locked for tomorrow is playing against someone that needs to win. Yeah. But since it's all for the top eight, uh, every win will count in the end. Yes. And um, so, since you're not resetting your your uh, points for for tomorrow, you, yeah. you you don't have any benefits for uh, con uh, conceding for someone yeah. against someone. Flamecast wheel comes down on turn one for Bjorn. and a favored hoplite. What do you think about playing the? Um, the flame cast wheel on turn one there. Uh, is it, isn't it better to, to sit on it? So it's, it, it most likely is. Uh, now that it's out there, there it's so much information that, that uh, yeah. Marcus has, and uh, can just uh, play around it yeah. from from the beginning. And uh, unless you you know that you will have uh, spend every man uh, every two turn. drop, three drop, four yeah. drop, then you you don't want to play it really. Um, it's so much better to just keep it, keep it a secret. Yeah. Uh, especially since he didn't even see it game one. There's so much information that <coughs> can be benefited from <coughs> keeping it secret. Yeah. So do we have anything to to put up, put on the hoplite here? Perhaps uh, chosen by Heliop. They're taking their sweet time with yeah. the, these these decisions. It's, uh, oh, a phalanx leader, Bjorn really has the heroic deck here. Uh, yeah. If he were to have some kind of uh, double target, uh, like yeah, the plus two plus two, the yeah, or on slot for next turn, it's uh, it could go pretty quick for this. Yeah, or. Or even the black one that gives them plus one plus one and life. And life link, yeah. yeah. I'm not afraid. Just swing with my athlete, my uh, arena athlete here. If Marcus taps out now and uh, Bjorn has some trick to to grow his guys, it's, yeah. uh, this could could go pretty quickly. Yeah. So Marcus really wants to play uh, the two three here. Uh, having two fairly juicy targets and being able to keep, to keep the smaller dudes away, but n not quite sure if he wants to tap out to give uh, Bjorn free reign here. 
even playing it now, uh, whatever Bjorn has, uh, he can't really attack into it. Uh, just extending his hand uh, since he, he's seen uh, both Magma and Lightning Strike. Yeah. And um, I think the Phantom Clader is, is just a 1 1. He's a 1 right? 1. Yeah, so even. even um, uh, even with a double target, yeah, uh, he would still just be at two two. Yeah, and uh, after this, uh, sure the the, um, the hot plate will be the a three four. Will be a three, three four, but it, it's still not. It's not the end. It's it's not the end of the world. Yeah. But the phalanx leader would still be um, a plausible kill target for the uh, for whatever really. Yeah. Well. Enough of the hypothesizing. There we go. Yeah. Uh, Magmeat. Yeah. La last, finish this deal. Last breath, breath on the tri Triton and Magmeat on uh, the Phalanx. Clearing the board again. And no land rock for your either. No. Here comes the fourth land drop. So, are we smelling a uh, divine verdict here? I don't think you would put it on the uh, arena. Uh, True, but the, but th then what what is Bjorn having in in his hand? Maybe he's uh, short on black mana. Maybe a, a couple of five drops, maybe the yeah. uh, the black white ones. <laughs> the mad cyclops, the three three uh, uh, has. Uh, uh, monstrosity ability of 6, uh, just gaining 3 plus 1 plus 1 encounters. Also with Trample. Still no plays or lands from Bjorn's side. If he has the verdict here, I imagine he'll also <laughs> put this guy in front of the... The 2 1. The 2 1, yeah. yeah. Or. Or he has some real trick. Yeah. Is it maybe. Uh, that'll do. Yeah, that'll do. Plus 2 plus 0. Uh, and regenerate. And regenerate and pay 2 life. Uh, so we're down to 10 and. Uh, and. Um, The uh, the hoplite grows somewhat steam augury. The reverse factor friction, where you split the cards yourself and uh, the opponent chooses. Yeah. Can we see the cards, please? <laughs> so there's a mountain in Sea God's Revenge yeah, and uh, uh, island, Voyage Ascent, and Cracking Trident. Yeah. That's a pretty good <laughs> sea marker yeah. there. Yeah. But sure, you take your bounce and uh, yeah. get rid of the rest. I only have one creature in play anyway. Yeah. Still no land for Bjorn, I think. And no real good attacks here, uh, since the hoplite is now a 2-3. 
that's a four or five uh, hex proof called Benthic Giant. It's definitely the body that uh, Marcus wants it in this case. Yeah. Uh, it's just uh, a house really that Bjorn doesn't have any answers to. True. And Bjorn has drawn his uh, fifth mana yeah. here though. So still no double black or still no double black and with the knowledge that Marcus has the Seagull's Revenge in hand. Yeah. Um, I I'm not sure I, I know it's it's it's, it's very, very very clear what the, the play is from from Bjorn here. Bjorn pretty much needs to have a bestow guy and bestow it on the on the hoplite. Yeah, that would uh, bestow guy uh, with the two power here it would be ideal or, really. Or the uh, death touch bestow guy here. Yeah, that would work as well. But it's no way. Yeah, they would, he would still survive the the Benthic Giant, even if he's just a the small guy. Yeah. So, is he thinking about just passing the turn once again? Do you think we could call a judge? To go and <laughs> give him slow, slow play warnings? <laughs> I don't think we can. Of course we can. <laughs> Something is happening. And there's 3-3. Three, 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 three. So the Seagull's Revenge from, uh, from Marcus here is pretty, is pretty likely, clearing the way, yeah, uh, the, the attacking in for, for six, yeah. bringing Bjorn down to four, and uh, then he can have pretty much anything that he wants in his hand. Yeah. There's the second black mana. Yeah. So maybe he has some kind of double play here. He could kill the, the arena elite and play the hoplite. Yeah. And hope that he just gets to jump it and uh, try to take it from there. Yeah. But Marcus still has a lot of cards in hand, so. Yeah, I think he drew a lightning strike la la last turn. If it is a lightning strike, then this game is over. Over. So he'll play both both creatures. Yeah, I guess that's that's a plausible or um, a possibility as well. Uh, problem with this is that uh, any any aura from Marcus' side uh, will make this a pretty pretty awkward situation. Yeah, it did look like he had a the Triton though. There's the lightning strike. Yeah. And Snap hop, block. Hop life goes to Chumpville. Yeah. Bjorn goes to two. Mark is with a handful of guests still. Oh, and yeah. And so a 3 4 flyer. Three, three lethal creatures, one with text proof. Yeah. And I can't see any card that Bjorn would, uh, would survive this. Uh, Merciless eviction. Very much not legal. Yeah, in the yeah, yeah. And there's the hand. Yeah. So, uh, Marcus Turk uh, Olsson uh, goes, uh, goes on to play for day two. Yes. And uh, Bjorn Andreasson sadly is uh, eliminated for the tournament. And he has such a nice uh, stand deck as well. Yeah. Yeah. We can bring bring up the uh, the slide that I prepared for uh, for his uh, standard deck because I, I had some inside info. Um, and he. Sister. The last one. Uh, this one. This one. Uh, there we go. Yeah. yeah. He called it Counterbugs. And uh, he has uh, built this deck kind of around Bread for the Hunt, which, which he claims is like a Bident of Thassa, but not uh, legendary. And. Um, all of his creatures are either unleash or uh, lots evolve. of troll or evolve or something like that, or has counters uh, 
built in, so to speak, on like, like this kind of area. Yeah, exactly. Um, he said that it's um, a very good matchup with with anyone trying to like go one for one with him uh, with uh, with the removal. Yeah. Because every is pretty good when every creature you play is an Ophidian or a, a fastest em emissary to take a more modern uh, reference. Yeah, we did. We did look at a uh, at a block construction deck. Yeah, for for Prosper Dragon's Maze, where Fisk, uh, Simon, uh, Frederick Fre sorry, Frederick Carlson wanted to to try out to play a uh, 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 blue green black uh, Bird of the Hunt deck, okay. where, where he where he could uh, potentially um, it, it is very much similar to this deck, yeah. where the, we played. Uh, few weeks before uh, here in Malmo yeah. um, where he had the sick draw I think I was playing either Esper or an early version of a, a, one of the bad Dragon's Mace or Mace Index that yeah. we tried out early um, where he went uh, turn one um, the evolve of one flyer yeah uh, turn two Loftless Troll <laughs> turn three uh, Bread for the Hunt yeah discard two Loftless Troll draw two cards yeah uh, and, and just play, play, playing Esper at that point, um, or or whatever I was playing. And yeah. It's like I didn't have the two mana. He was on the play, of course. Yeah. And then just trying to recover from that was just silly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Bread for the hunt on the board is a very, very powerful card at that point. And also, like your trump card in the um, in those matchups is, is like uh, supreme verdict. Yeah. Yeah. And, but lot of troll regenerator. Both lawless troll and experiment one regenerator. Are excellent yeah. regenerator. So yeah. it's it's just silly. It was uh, it was never a deck that they got anywhere. Oh. And it, it, I mean, if it had a nut nut straws, it was insane. But. It, it had you, too many non not it, draws. The non not draws were just bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was never really worth. We we never took it. Yeah. Past that stage of the testing. Apparently, uh, Bjorn Andreasson went uh, went one step further and took it to this turn. We have been joined here by Marcus Olsson, uh, the winner of the feature match that we just uh, saw. Hello, Peter. Hello. So uh, now you are through to day two. Yes. So now maybe you will be allowed to, to play uh, the dirty decks again, not having to, to place burn spells in, in, into the opponent's head. Yeah, yeah so, like I said, it's yeah. just very aggressive. Yeah. Uh, can we take a look at the... Yeah, uh, sure. yeah. Uh, it's much less dirty than, than <laughs> I want. But yeah, yeah, yeah. You, I had a mon the Monarch Wall uh, Steam. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, at least. So... Yeah, you have yeah. some some dirtle potential. Yeah, yeah. With, uh, with the, the thing about the Bident is that you, you commit to Vaporkin. Yeah, Vaporkin is good with the Bident, but yeah. Vaporkin is also not very good in the Tassus Bounty kind of things. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I understand. So, so th this was was an early pick for you. In yeah, the it was my first pick. Uh, first, first, and first actually, pick. Actually, yeah. I opened a pack with the blue emissary, two yeah. white emissaries, oh. Wingsteed Rider, the Bident. Uh, lightning Strike and Magma Jet. Okay. So it was very deep. So I, I willed the Magma Jet from the first pack. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so, so that that made me kind of want to be blue red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, by by that you're you're also knowing that uh, two players downstream stream will be will be blue or white. I, I, I don't look at it that way. Okay. I, I think my my three players downstream will play white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they will open blue mythics and give them to me. Yeah. <laughs> also, uh, Master of Waves uh, was a uh, pass to you then? Uh, no, actually I first picked it in pack two. Okay. Uh, so I was very happy about it. Very skillful Mr. Olsen. <laughs> and, um, it's actually good with Bidens. Oh, oh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jesus, how, much, how, how many burn spells do you have? Uh, three, I think. Okay, I, you have, you have uh, three of the um, the blue pinger. Oh yeah, yeah. Do, do you I like him? Fifteen, fifteenth pick. Ah, okay. In the first time. Uh, yeah, I like him. It's ah. a, It's good with binding. You need something, but you also don't want uh, two drops that dice everything. Like ah, okay. the, the two ones I play. Yeah, yeah. They're mostly for blocking. But the two threes <laughs> are 
they're, they're quite all right stopping the the two three minotaur and yeah, all yeah. the two one snap coasters or whatever they're called no snare coaster in this <laughs> format yeah Sna snap coasters <laughs> yeah your 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 damage from playing legacy um but all, all, also the um arena athletes uh kind of synergizes with the well with the uh, mind like the you you, you you can make him uh, not be able to block and get through with uh, dark, actually, dark creatures actually the, the only thing i can do is bouncing him or burn him no you have the tr 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 triton tactics yeah and the triton tactics yeah, yeah that's that's one not 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 not, not yeah, much. Op optimal either no. uh, uh but yeah true um this uh, fanatic of Mogus doesn't really feel like uh, your kind of card either. I, I have some like I have the bounce, I have the evasion, and some yeah. burn, so I'm, I can get my opponents from like eight to zero when they don't yeah. expect it. But but I'm, I sideboarded out the four two for a null, and I think. Okay. And I also have a Tessa's bounty on the eighteenth land. Okay. Um, so Tessa's bounty, are you targeting yourself since you have the uh, yeah the, the spell heart? Uh, just to, to yeah, and, and the memoric wall as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, and that's primeval titan. For yeah, us. yeah, yeah, yeah. The, this 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 card here has been dubbed uh, <laughs> primeval titan by uh, Marcus also. It's the same thing. You, you don't get the six six, and you can never do it again. But heads up, you get about the same. Yeah, two lands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I found out that the mo most of the time uh, you never have the mana to sa sacrifice it. Uh, I, I like play Tessa's Bounty, and, I, and this, this this also makes like I, I open a whip in my first draft, I think. Okay. Was it? Yeah. So I splashed him of the double burnished heart. Oh. Like. <laughs> <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice, and, nice. And I can shoot with the whip and a deck for two, gain two, and sacrifice. And Finding even Go more cards. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Really do the um, the primeval titan impression at at his best. And um, see, got revenge uh, when you revealed it off the the augury in, in the the last game. There, yeah. were, were we thinking that he was going to give you the seagull's revenge? Uh, I felt my hand was also very good. Yeah, we I, saw. I, we I saw. had a, a few cards, so yeah. I just wanted him to not. I'll draw me and play big creatures. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Seagulls had, had to be in one pile, and then the other had to be in the other mm. pile. So Voyage, Voyage End was in the other pile. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah. So I needed some kind of bounce. That's the yeah. only way he gets me there. So you you, you, you split the two bounce, bounce cards, and then he's he's uh, darned no matter how he, uh, yeah. he cuts it. And one land in each. I think I think I should have switched lands since he had a mountain up, untapped. It's like yeah. like potentially faked stymied hopes or whatever, but. Any yeah. particular reason as to why you main face it? Oh, you need yeah, yeah, I need it. Yeah, of course. And uh, so, what are you playing in standard? In standard, I play the Esper control deck. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And I was actually very happy about it. It's, it's fun and it's <laughs> like swings of relation lands and removal. But I it's went uh, 04, I think. In oh. Standard uh, you so haven't been, been been playing much uh, much standard. Uh, no, I haven't. But. Oh. Like it was the, the game loss, and then oh, uh, I played burn. It was one one. Okay. And I'm multi five, so that was that game. Then I played against uh, Johannes Albrechts yeah. mono black. Yeah. Same thing there. First game was 30 minutes. I resolved uh, four swings revelation, and he drew 14 cards, I think, of his underworld connections. Okay. So it was a very long grind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then yeah. I multi five, and then I multi five. Uh, okay. So it's something like that. So. Yeah, o o 04 feels it's, it's not of course very bad, but it could have been like two two would have been fair. Yeah, so you you don't feel it's representative of of your your ability or or the deck's ability. The deck's ability. <laughs> okay. Also, yeah. Well, uh, I'll see you tomorrow. I uh, yeah. hope to talk to you again. Thank you. Uh, and uh, have a nice night's sleep. You as well. Thank you. See you.